I lived next door to Harvey for around eight years. Never once did he strike me as someone who had something wrong with him. But in the last few days of my time living there, I had experiences that will haunt my mind for the rest of my life. You could even have called us friends, Harvey and I. On weekends that found us both at home, off from work, we would hang out more often than not. Sit on the porch at either my house or his, crack a few beers open and talk some trash. I wasn't a married man, nor did I have any kids. I was just me, living my life, paying the bond on my house and the payments on my car with my own hard-earned money. Harvey had Patricia, a dainty little blonde lady with pretty eyes and a pretty smile. From my observation, they had a pretty good thing going. Married for 12 years, they had no kids either, but they seemed to be happy together. I had never heard or seen them fight, no raised voices or anything of that sort. That's exactly why I was more than shocked and amazed when I heard shouting from next door. It seemed such an unnatural sound. It was so out of place, never having been heard before. I couldn't make out anything that either of them were saying. Neither did I attempt to do so. It wasn't any of my business, and I wasn't about to try and make it so. The yelling continued for about 10 minutes before I heard a shatter of glass. This caused me to immediately spring to my feet. If things had gotten physical, God forbid, I had to go over and see what was wrong. I got up and went downstairs. As I left my front door, Patricia came bursting out of theirs, ran to the car and unlocked it, got in and drove off. Harvey stood at the doorway watching her go. I went over to Harvey. Hey man, I, I don't mean to pry or anything, but what just happened? I heard all the noise and got a little worried. Harvey seemed not to notice me at first. It took a few seconds for him to respond, as if he was yanking himself out of deep thought. Oh, hey Charlie, he eventually said. And that was it. He turned around, went into the house and closed the door. I stood there for a minute or so, perplexed. He had never done something like that before, and it was extremely odd. I thought of knocking and trying again, but I decided to let the man be. He obviously had a lot on his mind and it wasn't my business. Later on that night, I was lying in bed, having just set my alarm and getting ready to drift off, when I realised I could hear something that sounded like a faint voice. Like something talking somewhere. Curious, I got up and followed the sound to my bedroom window. I opened the window and looked out over the street. There was no movement, but I still heard the voice. I discovered it was coming from next door. Harvey stood out in his backyard, facing away from me and talking. He was talking, but there was no one there. I went to my other window where I could see his back porch, because I thought Patricia might be standing there, but she wasn't. It was just Harvey standing there, talking to no one at all or to himself. After a while, he stopped and went back inside, and I heard him lock his back door. I honestly wondered if the man was okay. I made a mental note to make a better effort to talk to him the next day. When the time came around, I was outside raking leaves when Harvey came out of the house. I put the rake down and went over to talk to him. He had a sort of spaced out look about him, Kind of like he was the day before. Harvey, man. Straight up, is everything okay? I said to him. He looked at me and nodded. Yeah, Charlie. Sorry about yesterday. My head just wasn't in the right place, he said. It was my turn to nod and I put my hand on his shoulder. That's alright. Is uh, Patricia back? Did you talk things out? I asked. Yeah, we did. I keep trying to tell her what they told me, but she doesn't get it. Same thing yesterday. She just took off at me and held a bottle at me and left. You kept trying to tell her what they told you? What do you mean by that, Harvey? I asked. His whole demeanor changed suddenly at this question. His eyes widened and he became flustered and panicked. 
don't ask me that. Oh, hell. I wonder if they know. If they heard. They hear everything. Harvey, you, you're freaking out. And you're freaking me out a little too. What's going on, man? Who hears everything? I asked. Harvey was visibly shaking now. Charlie, you, you're my friend, man. You know me. I'm not a bad man. Am I? He asked me. No, Harvey, you're not a bad man. But I can't help if I don't know what's wrong. You need to talk to me. Charlie, they're, they're coming, man. They're coming. And I can't stop them. You can't stop them. I don't think anyone can. You need to tell someone, Charlie. Tell someone they're coming. Harvey was shouting now. I was about to speak to him again and try to calm him down when suddenly his head snapped backwards so fast. I actually heard a snapping sound coming from his neck. He was facing up at the sky at a freakishly unnatural angle. His mouth stretched open further and further until I heard a sickening crack. I was horrified and took a few steps back in my fear. That was when the sounds began. Escaping from Harvey's mouth were these ear-splitting, unearthly garbled, screeching sounds. It sounded like 50 high-pitched voices all shrieking at each other in unison. It was nothing that any human voice could ever produce. I covered my ears from the intense volume of the sound just before one of the front windows of my house shattered, presumably due to the piercing frequency of the sound. Then, he stopped. Just like that. When I looked at him again, he was back to normal. A few other residents were poking their heads out of their windows, alarmed at the sudden strange noise. But when they saw nothing out of the ordinary and the sound was gone, they went back to their business. I, however, stood there staring at Harvey with what I imagined to be a whole host of expressions on my face. Fear and shock, undoubtedly being the dominant ones. With a huge effort, I tried to compose myself as best I could. Harvey, what the hell? Was all I could manage. He responded as if he had only just seen that I was there. Oh. Hey, Charlie. I d didn't see you there. Damn this heat though, right? He said, and walked away back to his house. As you can imagine, after fixing up my broken window, getting to sleep that night was no easy task. But I eventually did, somehow, after spending ages wondering what the hell I had seen earlier, and what the hell was wrong with Harvey. I woke up sometime during the night, and I needed to take a leak, so I turned on my bedside lamp. I'm in no way ashamed to say that I screamed in unspeakable terror when I found Harvey standing at the foot of my bed. I screamed again and leapt out of bed on the opposite side from where he was and sprinted downstairs, snatched up my keys and unlocked the door in a flash and ran out. I ran to Harvey's house yelling for Patricia. I was met with an unpleasant odour when I went inside. Not of decay, but somehow through my primal human instincts, I recognised the scent of death immediately. The kitchen wasn't far from the front door, and there lay Patricia. She must have been dead from the day before already. Her abdomen had been savagely ripped open by heavens know what means, and the entire kitchen was splattered and coated with splashes of dried blood and puddles of coagulated blood that was too much to dry quickly. I was gasping for breath now, choking on the air I was trying to breathe. I can't even describe how I felt anymore. Shock and horror dominated me. I ran and snatched up the telephone in the living room and immediately called the police, figuring out what I would say. I settled for just saying there had been a murder. They came wailing down the street in less than 10 minutes. I had waited at Harvey's doorway and ran out to meet them. Two officers jumped out of the vehicle with their hands on their guns and asked if I was the one who called. I hurriedly told them I was, and explained as fast as I could about Harvey acting strange, and then me finding Patricia dead in the house. They told me to wait where I was, 
and charged into my house after I told them Harvey was in there. I fully expected and dreaded them coming out and saying they couldn't find him anywhere. But they came out, and one of the officers led a now handcuffed Harvey by his arm. The officer told me Harvey didn't say a word and didn't even resist. They took Harvey to the car, and before he got in, he looked straight at me and spoke. I told you, Charlie. I warned you that they were coming. But now it's too late. They're here. Hey guys, and thank you for listening to the latest in my Sleepy Pasta series. Now, this was a story by Reddit user Thousand Thorns, who I've spoken with quite a bit over this past few days, and I'll be posting more of his stories uh, as we go along. Um, so go check him out, his link will be in the description. In my opinion, anyway, he does this amazing thing with his stories where it leaves you questioning what's happened. And I'm all about that questioning. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast that I uploaded on Saturday. Um, I did do that with Jordan, so link again will be in the description or the comments if I remember this time. I did forget on Saturday, so very sorry, Jordan. Um, If you liked that style of things, I'll obviously not be doing that instead of Creepypastas, but it's a... It's one of the avenues that I've wanted to pursue on YouTube for a long time and I've got a few more episodes that I've already got in the works with different people. So hopefully you enjoy them. Please give me any feedback, um, anything that I can improve on it. It is the first podcast I've ever done and edited myself. So yeah, all feedback's welcome. There's quite a few of you have joined the Discord now, so we're getting a little community going off in there. A uh, link to that will be in the description, so if you want to join and talk with people who enjoy creepypastas and the creepier side of life, join us, see how you like it. I- I'm loving every second of it, and interacting with you guys is honestly amazing at the moment in time anyway, given the isolation and things, it is keeping me sane. So thank you to those that have spoken with me in that Discord. Anyway, links to everything I've spoken about and the Facebook will be in the description and obviously this is out on Monday, hopefully if I've edited it in time, and this will be the new upload schedule during this isolation period, so I'll be doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday and either a Saturday or a Sunday one depending how long into the night I'm editing. So hopefully you enjoy that format when everything goes back to normal, which I don't think is going to be in the near future, but when it does, I'll probably end up going back to Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. But while I've got a little bit of time stuck in the house, um, I might as well be productive doing it, and I hope that I'm entertaining you guys that are stuck at home as well. So enough of me rambling, I think I've done it for nearly two and a half minutes. I'll let you go. (laughs) Thanks once again, and take care.